Hi, and welcome to Season 2 of That's Roddy Mysterious, a podcast of short tales about true mysteries. What created the Potomsky Crater? Who was involved in the 1963 Great Train Robbery? I'm not going to solve those mysteries, but they'll be interesting to learn about. I'm your host, Kelly with an I. Transcripts and references for all episodes can be found at thatsruddymysterious.wordpress.com. No apostrophe and no exclamation point. Today's tale is about the Bermagui Five. The 1910 poem, Bermagui in a Strange Sunset, by Henry Lawson, discusses the disappearance of the Bermagui Five. It says, Jumble of sand and mongrel scrub and tussock and beach hotel, sort of regular jumble of weatherboard shanties, all seem to face sunset with guilty, guilty, glazed and glaring eyes turned towards where, far out at the end of the mountain, Lamont Young party were lost, or not lost, nearly 30 years ago. Bermagui is a coastal town in New South Wales, Australia. It lies about 380 kilometers or 237 miles from Sydney. Mutton Fish Point, today also known as Mystery Bay, is a bay in Bermagui. On October 11, 1880, Mystery Bay became the location of an enigma that remains unsolved today. William Johnston, a farmer, was riding his horse near the bay when he saw something shining on the rocks. He first went to get his neighbor, Albert Reed, and together they proceeded to investigate the shining thing. As they got closer, the pair realized that the shining object was a green fishing boat. The mast and sail of the boat had been tied together. Upon closer inspection, they realized the boat had been damaged. There was a bullet hole in the starboard side. The police were later able to determine that the hole was made from the inside. There was no one aboard the boat, but it wasn't completely empty. The boat had a pile of rocks in it, as well as some blankets. There were five bags of clothing in the stern, as well as a pair of glasses. There was also a geology book in the boat. The book had Lamont Young written in copper plate on the front page. All of the items found within the boat were dry. Lamont Young was a geologist who worked for the New South Wales Department of Mines. In October of 1880, Lamont Young would have been 29 years old. He was tall and bearded. In October of 1880, Young had been told by his bosses to survey the newly found gold fields north of Bermagui. He set off together with his German field assistant, Maximilian Schneider. They arrived at the fields on October 8, 1880, where they first had dinner with Senior Constable John Barry. After dinner, Schneider took his leave. He would never be seen again. Young continued on to survey the fields. He was seen by a miner walking back to camp. He was seen again shortly thereafter by another miner, and then was never seen again. What happened to Young and Schneider? On the same day that they arrived at the fields, October 8th, the pair got into the fishing boat, which would later be found at Mutton Fish Point. The boat was owned by Thomas Towers. He had left home in Batemans Bay, which is 100 kilometers or a little over 60 miles up the coast of New South Wales. Towers had two friends with him, William Lloyd and Daniel Casey. Their plan was to fish and then sell their catch along with some potatoes they had brought along to the gold miners. Towers, Lloyd, Casey, Young, and Schneider set sail on October 8th. On the morning of October 10th, the boat was seen stationary with only one person aboard. Later that day, the boat was seen stranded on the rocks with no one aboard. Then on the morning of October 11th, 1880, William Johnston discovered the boat stranded at Karuna Reef and went to investigate. Albert Reed and William Johnston notified the police. Senior Constable John Barry, along with Albert Reed and Henry Kitely, who was in charge of the gold fields, examined the boat on October 11th. They discovered a second book in the hull, signed by Young. Kitely found a lot of vomit in the stern of the boat, which made him feel ill. He made Barry continue the investigation. Barry made a detailed list of everything he found in the boat. In addition to the items discovered when the boat was first found, Barry found a pocket compass, several sacks of potatoes, Schneider's pipe and coat, and a small blue bottle filled with an unknown liquid. 
This bottle was of great interest to the police. They discovered the bottle was filled with oil of copaiba, which is a topical oil used for inflammation or pain. After some investigation, Kitely determined that there was no evidence of anything strange happening aboard the boat. He found neither signs of a struggle nor any blood. He did find some bullets aboard the vessel, but he determined that they were used as sinkers for fishing purposes. Senior Constable Barry stopped investigating because he became ill with a fever and vomiting. Upon his return to the investigation, he was told that a campfire and a meal had been found near where the boat was discovered. He was also told there were strange footsteps found along the beach. Kitely offered a 10 pound reward for the recovery of Young's body and the Metropolitan Police in London offered a 300 pound reward for the same. The police and volunteers from the Department of Mines conducted a thorough search for the five missing men, but none of them were ever found. After the investigation turned up nothing, William Tate, a man who called himself a spiritualist, went to see the police. He claimed that Young came to him as a ghost and told him that the men were killed by three men who had asked for matches to light their pipes. He also claimed the ghost told him the bodies of the men were buried in a deep hole. The police went to investigate the claim and found nothing. The local news took great interest in the story. On March 11, 1885, the Melbourne Argus reported that Young's bullet-riddled corpse had been found. The report was intended as a joke, and the paper had to print a retraction as Young's body hadn't been found. On August 22, 1888, the Bega Gazette reported that the police were watching a man who had confessed to murdering the five men to a barmaid. Upon reading this, the police began a search for the barmaid and the man who had confessed and found neither. The story had been concocted by a journalist. No proof has ever been found to determine what happened to the five men aboard the fishing boat that ran aground at Karuna Reef. Nothing has ever been found to explain why the boat was found abandoned but with all those belongings still aboard. Kitely thought he knew what happened. He was quoted as saying that he believes Young was killed and that Schneider, not wanting to be blamed, stole Young's valuables and disappeared. Kitely said that Young had valuables which were never found. Senior Constable Martin believed that there was foul play involved. He believed that one member of the party shot the others for their money and valuables and then disappeared. Because of the mysterious disappearance of the five men, Mutton Fish Point was renamed Mystery Bay. The men have been memorialized in the area in a few ways. There was a memorial erected to the men about 15 kilometers north of Bermagui, about halfway between it and Naruma. There's also a monument at Mystery Bay, which was erected in 1980 to mark 100 years since the disappearance. One of the names on the monument is incorrect, however. It says Bartholomew Casey disappeared, but Bartholomew is actually the son of Daniel Casey, who was really aboard the boat. A park and a road at Mystery Bay have been named after Lamont Young. What happened to the Bermagui Five? Did one member of the party kill the rest and then disappear? Who got sick in the stern of the boat? Why were there holes in the boat? What do you think? Thanks for listening to today's episode of That's Ruddy Mysterious. I'm your host, Kelly with an I. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a review and follow That's Ruddy Mysterious to be updated about new episodes. Tune in next Tuesday for another thought-provoking tale.